So low level versus high level languages, what are they and how are they different? Well, the whole thing starts with the following picture. You have a system, which is your processor, your RAM, your hard drive, etc. But actually mostly just the processor and the RAM that sits under an operating system level and the operating system sits under an interpreter or a compiler. Now we'll get into what those are in a minute, but basically they convert code into stuff that the system can read. They do it in different ways and I will go over that in a second. So if we were to abstract this whole system out, the system OS, int and comp, we would draw something like this. We would say the system is the low level, so it sits kind of at the base of the pyramid, and then we work our way up to OS, int and comp, which would be the high level. And that's the root of the name low level versus high level. So if we look at the kinds of languages that systems can understand, the system itself, the processor and the RAM, will understand machine code. Zeros and ones, basically, or hexadecimal code, you can write in machine code if you're crazy, but it can be done. And that's the way it was done, I guess, when all of this started, which was decades and decades ago. One level up from machine code, which is the lowest level, you can get assembly code, which takes away some of that machine code drudgery and makes it a little more readable. But even now, people don't use assembly unless it's a very special use case. If we were to go one level up, we'd go to the C language. Most people, most programmers, pros would say C is a low level language. And they're right, but only in the context of today's world. Because way back when, when C was invented, it was a revelation in that it wasn't assembly and was much easier to write. And then we start moving on to the languages that maybe you know and recognize, such as C-sharp, Kotlin, or Swift. Now these, coming back to the interpreter compiler thing, these use a compiler to create machine code from the readable code that you have written. So whenever you build your application, that's exactly what it's doing. It's providing instructions that will later be used by the processor directly or via the OS. Finally, we have stuff like Python, Java, JavaScript, and C++. Now these are not compiled, although they can be, okay? So in some cases they can be, in other cases they aren't. What, a, what an interpreter does is take that code, it doesn't compile it into machine code, but rather as you're running the program, so the end user runs the program, it fires into that interpreter, which creates machine code on the fly that your system then processes. Now you might say, why would we do that? Because it seems like an unnecessary waste. Why not just compile it once and run everywhere? Well, you might have noticed we have different kinds of processes, different kinds of systems, different kinds of operating systems. It's, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So if I write a program in C Sharp for Windows in .NET, then it's going to run in Windows. I have to compile that separately to run in Linux and separately to run in Mac, if it even runs in Mac at all. But these days you can actually do that. The advantage of an interpreted program is I just need to send out my Python or Java once. I just need to fire off my Android app. One, well, Android doesn't count, so scratch that. I just need to fire off my Java app once and then it will run everywhere that has the Java platform installed because it takes care of that machine code conversion on the fly, which is why you saw proliferation of Java applications sort of, you know, three, four decades, four decades ago now, maybe three decades ago, whenever it was invented, two, three decades ago. And th that was because of precisely that reason. So you knew it would run everywhere. Java is slightly on the decline, but fear not if you want to get a job in Java because there are so many applications to maintain and Java is one of the shortages of developers, I believe. So look into that if you're looking for a surefire job. Right, so the same applies to Python, JavaScript and C++. They're all interpreted too. So that's what people mean when they say low level versus high level language. Low is at the system, high is at the interpreter compiler level.